Hello, I'm Callum, and we are, and you're watching TNW TV. I am here with Larry Sanger, one of the co-founders of Wikipedia and the founder of Everpedia. How are you doing today? I, I'm, I'm doing just uh, very well, but I have to correct you. I'm not oh. actually a founder of Everpedia. Oh, I'm, my I'm, apologies. I'm the chief information officer. Oh, my apologies. Uh, I, I joined uh, the guys when we switched to the blockchain. So. Oh, okay. So that came in. Sorry for the immediate gaffe. All right, no problem. Um, so maybe for people who aren't too familiar with Everpedia, can you give us like a brief uh, description and breakdown of uh, a what your role is there and like w what it is? Sure. So Everpedia began life in 2015 as uh, the encyclopedia of everything, which is why it's called Everpedia. Um, it, so it's it's not restricted in topic mm -hmm. uh, at all. There's no notability policy the way that there is on Wikipedia. So you could go and make an article about yourself or about your business or about your the street you live on or whatever. I have an article about my left thumb. <laughs> um, and um, let's see, there's... Um, uh, another big difference is that it has a much more modern design. Yeah. Um, uh, Wikipedia is kind of stuck in its ways because it's constrained by uh, um, the, the necessity of, of uh, getting what they call consensus mm. um, support for any major decisions that affect the site. And while it's kind of hard to uh, achieve consensus when people who disagree <laughs> with how the, the website is, is run uh, end up uh, going elsewhere. Yeah. Um, so, um, then um, about 18 months ago, uh, about the time that I, I joined the company, um, the, the founders of Everpedia decided to move to the blockchain. Okay, and what kind of drove that decision? What was the... Uh I know it's probably a hugely complex thing, but if you could summarize. It is. It is. Okay, I'll try to simplify it. Um, basically, they were dissatisfied with the fact that, that they had experimentally run ads on mm -hmm. the site. They didn't want to do that. It sort of ruined the experience. And then they were thinking of other ways to monetize it. Yeah. And, and uh, one of the founders, Sam Kasmian, had actually done blockchain mining, um, <laughs> or, or, or rather Bitcoin mining, um, when he was in, in uh, uh, college. Yeah, just and, to get a bit of extra income. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Um, yeah, making use of, of the, the uh, free university electricity. <laughs> Great move. Um, <laughs> I respect that a lot. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, and so they they thought. Well, what if we tokenize? Basically, the idea then would be that you uh, don't just create a a blockchain, and a blockchain is mm -hmm. basically a, a, a shared or distributed database, yeah. among other things. But that's one of the one of its main features. So it, it can actually replace a database, right? Um, and um, so the idea is that that you can um, by uh, sharing that out, you can create a, a sense of, of a shared ownership um, and a whole network, not just uh, a back end for uh, Everpedia, but for all kinds of different encyclopedias that would essentially share the same um, space and not just in, uh, not just encyclopedias, but also individual uh, article writers just writing on their blogs. One of the things that that I want to see happen in the next year um, is a browser plugin or various browser plugins that enable people to press a button and an article that they've written for Medium or for their blog or whatever is submitted to the Everpedia network. Ah. Yeah, and then the idea is we will have multiple competing uh, articles on the same topics. Um, and uh, and one of my jobs, actually, in the next six months or so is going to be to really pin down um, something I've, I've sort of... Th it's what really brought me to the company, which is... Um, a system to rate encyclopedia articles, all the yeah. encyclopedia articles in the world. And how would you like go about, is, is that like a combination of different factors? Would you use analytics like time spent on page or would it be like voting or a combination of all the above? Like would experts be involved in like rating the truth? How do you kind of see that shaping? 
um, voting, basically. Yeah. Um, in order to make that reliable, though, then we're going to have to solve the problem of um, identity on the blockchain yeah. so that there is reliably one person, one vote, and also that the, the claims that people make about themselves are that valid. they are experts, for yeah. example, um, is, uh, are, uh, are actually genuine and, and uh, reliable. Um, yeah, and then once once that is in place, then then we'll enable people to um, to credibly declare their areas of expertise and their nationality and their religion and their gender and all kinds of other aspects of their identity, and then users will be able to um, rank and re-rank articles according to their average ratings according to these different groups. Ah. And this, uh, so, just imagine going to a page uh, about. God, and it isn't just one article as on Wikipedia. The Wikipedia article will be there, but it will be among all the other encyclopedia articles from a million different points of view, and it but would in like different collate. rankings yeah. according to, say, the Christian religion or or, or Islam or uh, Judaism or atheism, right? Yeah, so it's almost like allowing people a wider breadth of information to get access to so they can kind of read a range of different views and then come to their own opinion rather than being said, this is the one opinion that exists. Exactly. And the, the, the main reason, to get back to your question, um, that the guys wanted to move to the blockchain is moving to the blockchain enables um, users to become co-owners of the whole mm -hmm. network. So when you write an article or submit an article um, or an edit, you actually get paid in our token, token called oh, yeah. IQ. Now we don't pay you, we don't own the tokens. Um, uh, they are contained on the, on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're, you earn them through interaction with, with the blockchain. With <laughs> I like that a lot, that's very clever. Yeah. Um, so do you see then a lot of positives for kind of blockchain and decentralized tech like do you see that um because it's one of those things it's so it's such a hyped up field of study that it's hard to sometimes separate uh i guess marketing guff from kind of what you're talking about which is actual solid uh, benefit of how it can you know really help society where do, uh, other areas do you see that kind of yeah, I've totally. Uh, I, I have drunk the Kool Aid on this. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I am a true believer when it comes to the uh, the, the uh, revolutionary advantages of blockchain. Um, it basically, it fulfills the promise of open source software and open content projects like mm. Wikipedia um, by giving people a financial uh, incentive to participate and financial ownership over the the uh, the, the collective commons. Yeah. Um, and instead of the, the value being sort of out in the ether and yet if the uh, the smart contracts are well designed the protocols are well designed it will be fair right yeah. and and decentralized and so forth it's the antidote in in, in uh, all kinds of different examples for the the central centralizing influences that we see from things like Facebook and Twitter and so forth so how would you go about then uh, solving the Facebook problem as it were the idea that there is or you know the Google issue where one single private company can decide what is right or wrong. Yeah, so I'm really bothered by that, frankly. Yeah. I, I, uh, I believe in pluralism and I believe in neutrality. I've written a long article called Why Neutrality? And it sort of and animates where can people my find approach. that article if they're... Uh... Just search online Larry Sanger, Why Neutrality? And it's on Ballotpedia that I wrote cool. it for them. They commissioned it. Um, and um, so blockchain... Um, basically gives it's it's a huge topic i need to sort of collect my thoughts on mm. this but blockchain requires uh that that users um they become uh the owners of their own data mm. right um and it gives them a secure place online uh, a way in, in which they can make it accessible to other people, but under their own terms. Yeah. So the, the, the way to answer your question, um, to uh, uh, replace Facebook, or at least reform Facebook and, hmm. and Twitter, um, is to allow users to own their own data. It could be put on the blockchain. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's possible, you know, maybe Twitter will end up doing this. We'll, we'll see. 
Um, Jack Dorsey, when I, I asked him on Twitter if they were thinking of uh, allowing or were they willing to allow people to export their data from Twitter to in a common format elsewhere and yeah. also uh, republish um, from a place that, that uh, users control, not Twitter servers, um, but data uh, onto uh, in, in their Twitter feed. He said yes explicitly uh, to both questions and also he's, he favors the idea of our controlling our, our feeds. Yeah. So I, I don't know if, if Jack is really going to do that or if that was just you know talk, yeah, he has um, but that's the interviews. direction that we need to move in. Mm. Uh, I'm, I actually am so passionate about this that um, I've, I've drafted something I'm calling the, the Declaration of Digital Independence. Um, so I, I haven't, I haven't uh, released this. I'm like talking about it with friends and, and yeah, things. Yeah, trying to formalize before you come up with yeah, the final document. Yeah, and, and like trying to, to get uh, a, a lot of uh, support from, from high-level figures before I, I go fully public with it. Mm. But uh, what, what needs to exist is a, a common shared understanding that we own our own data, we should serve our own data, um, and the the role that that these former, uh, formerly centralized social media companies will play mm -hmm. in the future um, is to aggregate people's feeds from different sources. Yeah. So okay. that in the same way that you can use a blog reader um, to, to, yeah, to uh, have a feed get of different feeds from different people, so they're, uh, Facebook and Twitter and the rest need to to uh, pivot themselves into uh, social media readers. Yeah. What about the role of oversight in that, though? So, how would you, uh, how would that work in like extreme? Why do we need? Places? Why do we need oversight? Right? I will oversee my own feed. Thank you very much. But That's then, what, how I what, feel what, about what, that. when it's being pushed into, you know, and used for like extremist content, is that should it just be completely free? How how does it like balance in that? that world? Well, it depends on what you're talking about, right? If you're talking about like a, a general forum mm. that people are, uh, that a lot of people participate in, as long as it's not too many, right, mm. then it certainly makes sense. I've always been in favor of moderation, yeah. right? Um, keeping people polite and so forth in a relatively small group. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but the question that you ask could be asked about the internet in general. Oh, of course. If you're, if you're talking about, um, you know, what to do about extremist content. So, uh, are, should we uh, object to the HTTP col uh, protocol, <laughs> right? Because, because it, it can be used to and host. And that DNS system, because it, it allows um, uh, racists and, and, and uh, other miscreants to uh, put their, their uh, nonsense online. Uh, the answer is no, not because we like that. Of course, we hate that. I certainly do. Yeah, of um, course. But because that's the price we pay, we pay for freedom, and it always has been. Yeah, and it will always be on some level that you're never going to like everything. Right? right. Yeah, it's just one of those interesting things things because there is now I wouldn't say I necessarily agree with uh, you know social media companies deciding what's available but yeah. you can also look at how they dealt with ISIS yeah that it was a massive issue and because there was a concerted effort across that industry yeah. their propaganda machine and that's up to working. them I, I am not yeah. saying I, I entirely oppose these calls from from some conservatives and even from strangely from some libertarian leaning people who want there to be government regulations about this stuff. I totally disagree. You don't want the government in charge of this stuff, people. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, not a track record like yes, uh, many of them have. Look, if you ask the government to to be the arbiters of what is acceptable to to uh, ban then they become the ones who who decide who gets to speak in the public arena and who doesn't. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's that's a very dangerous thing to make, especially about as something so as as powerful um, as as social media. That should be left free. Um, and and then of course, if Facebook wants to establish their own rules and Twitter wants to establish their own rules, then. Let them do so, absolutely. Yeah, they have um, the right. They're private companies, so they can. But effectively, you're saying we need a system outside of that yeah. that is completely neutral. And, so you and decent people, of course, will not go to the darker parts of the internet. That's yeah, how it's course. always worked. You know, <laughs> I mean, back in the in the, the late 90s, when there was the, the dot-com boom, do 
you think that the storm fronters were not there? No, they no, were there. After, but people didn't pay any attention to them, right? <laughs> um, and, and that's how it will continue to be. That's how it should be. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. So what other sort of things would you uh, want to include in your um, kind of decentralized social media declaration? Or oh, sorry, not social media, decentralized declaration. Um, so... <laughs> okay, I'll describe it. Yeah. So um, I, I'm kind of modeling it after the, the, the United States Declaration of Independence. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's going to be the final uh, yeah. result, but in the Declaration of Independence, um, it, it, it consists mainly of a catalog of abuses mm. of, of you, you nasty Brits. Uh, <laughs> all the things that Guilty. King George uh, d did um, to, to, to the, the poor American colonists. Um, and, and so in the same way, you know, there, there's uh, King Zuck and, and, um, <laughs> and King Twitter uh, that were complaining about all, the, all, all of their abuses. And I, I, I want to catalog them and say, what what we declare is uh, that we uh, deserve the right to own our own data, to mm -hmm. serve our own data, and uh, for uh, um, these uh, social media companies uh, to be essentially um, uh, aggregators of feeds that are developed independently. So there needs to be an open standard and a common standard for social media. And we've, there's people who have uh, defined such standards. The standards exist. We need to make a, a single, strong, common standard in the same way that RSS is. Yeah. And, yeah. So it'd be the idea effectively of the data that we share on Facebook, that's no longer their data. They can show it for our consent, but at the end of the day, we, the users, own it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, so uh, there's a lot of people who are very influential in, mm. in um, actually the social media itself, but uh, tech entrepreneurship, um, who uh, are on board with this idea. It just it just all needs to come together, right? Yeah. So how would you go about, like, so obviously you'd speak to those people and then you would be a similar thing where they sign it. Would, yeah. it, would it be a, a physical document? Or would it be like a... Well, a, um, yeah, I want to make it like a petition, first yeah. of all. But then I, I also want uh, to, to have, I was thinking on July 4th and July 5th, something like that, yeah. um, there will be uh, basically a... Um, a, a boycott, as it were, of social media. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll create some browser plugin for, for people that, that will, on their behalf, post uh, something that says, you know, every hour, I'm on strike. Um, and uh, this goes on for 24, 48, 48 hours, something like that. And, and people say, uh, you know, they, they will declare that, that they're not participating on these days. Um, and uh, there will be a link to the declaration there. Um, and uh, with, with uh, luck, I, I think we'll get people on board that way, yeah. to raise awareness of the, the of very the possibility of decentralizing social media. And and, and um, uh, hopefully this will create a, uh, a public groundswell of, of uh, support for that idea. That will create public demand, which is going to light a fire under lots of different people that need to come together to actually build the new system. Oh, that sounds absolutely fantastic, and I can't wait to uh, see it happen. So thank you very much for your time, Larry. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, and make sure you stay tuned to TNW TV for more great, insightful chats like the one we've just witnessed.